You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's 3322, which is an interesting assortment of numbers. In any event, uh, Ukraine carries on. Uh, COVID is ending. How do you effectively maneuver these economic shoals, these uh, breakwaters, if you will, that could uh, potentially affect your portfolio, your retirement, all of this? Jim Tucker. Tucker Bria is on with us now to discuss uh, how we navigate through these difficult times. Jim, it is great to have you on the show. So uh, as an investment advisor, what are you telling your clients out there as far as one, the Ukraine war, Ukraine-Russia war, potential destabilization of Europe, and two, What about uh, the end of COVID, the end of the pandemic, I should say, COVID is with us, or the phase in from the pandemic to endemic times? What's your perspective on this? Kerry, first, thank you for having me on today's program. Uh, Two very uh, important avenues that I know my clients are always interested in hearing about. Uh, We'll start with Ukraine. Uh, This is clearly... uh, from a humanitarian issue, uh, a a huge issue. From an investment uh, perspective, I think it's, for the most part, going to be noise. Uh, If we were day traders, if we were trading on Wall Street, clearly the volatility is giving a lot of opportunity to make or lose a ton of money. Uh, From an investor perspective, uh, this is pretty much not going to be a long-term impact of the market. What I will say, however, is that even before Ukraine, uh, we were doing what I call building some mountain ranges uh, with our client portfolio uh, with our client portfolios, meaning that uh, we had a ton of volatility. It, it started toward the end of 2021 and uh, kicked off very. Uh, significantly uh, for the front part of 2022. So the net net for me, as I'm looking at clients as it relates to Ukraine, is that it is a an investment non-event, uh, meaning that this year is going to be a fairly straightforward year as I manage uh, uh, client portfolios, uh, probably one rebalancing and uh, a year-end rally post uh, post-November elections, as long as the Federal Reserve doesn't come in and uh, give us an after-election rate increase. So that's Ukraine uh, in a nutshell. Uh, The ending of COVID really, uh, or as you said, the ending of the pandemic, it it is very much uh, an opportunity and also a uh, sometimes a, 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 a cautionary uh, view, depending on how detailed and how company specific uh, the listeners are as it relates to uh, their investing. Uh, From my perspective, looking at it from my clients and and portfolio uh, approach, uh, the ending of COVID is really geared to being uh, what are your objectives and how did COVID change those objectives? Uh, I'll focus initially on retirement and our retirees. Uh, COVID, in terms of, again, an investment perspective, uh, retirees' objectives and life plans, while many times placed on hold, probably weren't changed all that dramatically. Uh, we had a situation where there was a huge uh, correction or uh, impact on the market in March of 2020, 2020 uh, but then it came back incredibly quickly. So uh, the, the market is a place to uh, be invested uh, and uh, allow many of these uh, uh, life and world events to play out. Uh, huge uh, personal uh, disruptions, certainly as it relates to COVID, but from the standpoint of 
uh, of an investment perspective. There was an opportunity in March of 22, uh, 2020 with cash, uh, and I see a similar opportunity now. All right. So what about inflation, which is uh, taking a big toll on these markets, even if it's not that obvious? Right now, uh, we supposedly have 7.5% inflation. Uh, the the uh, wholesale price, 9.7%. But so many of uh, the things that you need for your day-to-day -day life have gone up many times more, like gasoline, uh, like home heating oil, natural gas, energy of all descriptions. Uh, food prices are higher. Grains, wheat is higher. Everything is more expensive and getting more expensive. Labor prices going up. All these things. Is this long term? Or is somehow the Fed's magic bullet of quarter percent increases in the Fed's fund rate going to bring it under control? Uh, well, I wish I had better news uh, on this perspective. Uh, my cloudy crystal ball says that we have inflation that's going to be here for a while. Uh, I don't believe it was different this time with government spending, uh, throwing a lot of money into uh, the economy. Uh, we have uh, the basics of you know, when you have a lot of additional money in the uh, in the economy, it is inflationary. And from that, uh, eventually, as is about to happen, probably uh, in March 16th and 17th, the Federal Reserve is going to make its first uh, increase in, in, in interest rates. I expect, as most people do now, that this is going to be a ongoing process for much of 2022 potentially into 2023. Um, the expectation is now four to six raises and potentially also one at least will be of a half percent variety. I don't expect that to happen for March. I think the, the Federal Reserve is gonna need to see what the impact is uh, with uh, their first uh, raise. Um, overall, the market is already baking this in to uh, what's going on uh, right now. The market, I think, where maybe uh, six months ago, uh, there might have been some uh, individuals and uh, who were still pushing the fact that the inflation was transitory. When I started reading about all the consumer product companies raising or signaling that they were gonna raise uh, their prices for fall of 2021, uh, that's not, a temporary issue. So uh, big picture, uh, we're inflation's here. Uh, the uh, pretty much for retirees, if they can wait out the dislocation in the bond market, they'll see somewhat higher uh, returns in their uh, you know, bond reinvestment portfolio. But from the standpoint of the actual need for cash, which is always a, a critical issue uh, when you set your spending plan. Uh, the need for cash is going to be higher uh, because of the simple things that you talked about, whether it's food or whether it's gas. Uh, we're going to be at a higher uh, place uh, uh, for the foreseeable future. No doubt. When these inflation starts, it's really hard to stop. And we printed up so much money. And then uh, unlike usual where it goes to the banks and you can sterilize it, uh, it went to a lot of uh, individuals, a lot of small businesses, unemployment, uh, all these things that earned income tax credit. That money is much harder to sterilize and stop from being inflationary. So what types of uh, investments do you think uh, will fare best in this inflationary environment, Jim? Don't just survive, thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Trilogy Metals is a world-class developer in Alaska's Ambler Mining District. The company already possesses 8 billion pounds of copper, 3 billion pounds of zinc, over 1 million gold equivalent ounces, and now over 77 million pounds of cobalt. Trilogy's Arctic project boasts an after-tax net present value of $1.4 billion with a 33% IRR. Trilogy is led by an experienced management team with proven success in discovering and developing projects in Alaska. The company is well capitalized, has no debt, and possesses strong institutional support. Trilogy trades on the New York and Toronto exchanges under the ticker symbol TMQ. To learn more, go to TrilogyMetals.com. That's TrilogyMetals.com. 
This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Great question. Uh, what we would obviously look toward are things like real assets, uh, you know, real estate, you know, commodities. Uh, these are a little bit more on the risky side, but they also, in inflationary times, provide some uh, relative value uh, in terms of what uh, one may wish uh, to invest in. Um, I think uh, also for those of us who have time uh, getting into the growth stocks, the stocks where you have the opportunity for, for capital appreciation rather than dividends and the value side, even though there's a lot of talk now about going to dividend paying stocks and value, I think in inflationary times, uh, I like to see uh, growth and if there's going to be any overweight to have it on the growth side of the equation and not on the value side. Okay. Uh, hey, what is your take on the green economy long term? You know, the switch to EVs without mentioning specific companies, the switch to EVs, uh, the whole, in my opinion, often delusionary viewpoint that somehow you can just eliminate the hydrocarbon based economy and switch seamlessly where everybody is, uh, you know, basically a windmill is uh, providing your house with electricity. It's uh, kind of unrealistic. But these are the policies that are being pursued now, Jim. Well, Kerry, I'm really happy to hear you say delusionary because I'm going to start and was going to start by saying I'm somewhat cynical about uh, the actual way for meaningful change in our daily life. Now, having said that, and having seen in my community a number of solar, solar panels going up on individuals' roofs, this is a function of government programs. And where there is government money coming in, um, there are always ways uh, to make money uh, because there will be companies that will be propped up by uh, the, the, the money and, and not necessarily by the market and market profits. So similar to having the, the Fed with its uh, easy money program, propping up the market and allowing the market to get a little bit in front of its skis over the past couple of years, I think there certainly are opportunities to, uh, to invest in the uh, thematic change, which is growing on, which is going on, but from the standpoint of uh, getting rich quick or identifying a company, um, that's something that uh, is, is going to be very much government uh, and, and policy driven and not um, market or investment driven. So, so my view is uh, to, to find a, a quality manager uh, that is going to play the field, play the theme of green energy as we play the, the theme of technology and healthcare uh, and allow that to happen. I think water uh, to, to be a specific aspect in this whole uh, you know, category, I think water is, is something that's gaining a lot of attention. And I do think, again, playing the field and not trying to pick the individual company is where to go. Okay, so electric vehicles. All right. So part of the green economy, but the fact of the matter is, even without subsidies around the world, they are increasing market share and getting to the point where, you know, they're really uh, becoming meaningful as a, you know, comparison or as an alternative to internal combustion engine cars. Uh, you bullish about the future of uh, EVs? Without question. I think that the, the transition is going to happen and I think it's going to happen more likely uh, within the existing uh, car companies. The one exception clearly is Tesla, which uh, is building uh, a, a huge uh, uh, from scratch company uh, on that. And without talking about uh, the, the pros and cons of investing in Tesla, I don't see many other car companies with the new car companies with the required capital expenditures to come in and start something. I don't see that really happening. I think it's going to be the uh, individual companies. Uh, you, know, you know, Ford has come out with this uh, new truck that, that, that's getting a lot of uh, attention. Uh, and so it's going to be the existing companies that really uh, come out and make a uh, transition of their existing models uh, into uh, the electric, uh, uh, electric car uh, direction. All right. Well, 
interesting uh, trend that's taking place. We'll see if uh, the, the OEMs, the existing ones, are really in a position or whether the Chinese just take it all. We've got a few new car companies in the US, Lucid. We've got uh, Rivian in addition to Tesla. And we'll see if they're able to do it. Uh, Tesla is really, uh, since, since before World War II, it's the only successful new car company to enter the market in the United States in 80 years, almost, right? Uh, 75, 80 years. I don't remember the last new company, new auto company that actually became successful long before I was born, probably before you were born, before the war. And uh, maybe my parents, if they were around, would remember it, but I don't. And uh, in fact, during the Great Depression, you had a huge consolidation of auto companies, a lot of them going out. And I don't remember a lot of new ones coming in after the Depression ended, because then in the during uh, World War II, you had a shortage of vehicles. So it's remarkable, in my opinion, from that fact that they have succeeded where there are many other companies have have tried to enter the market. So in any event, the. Uh, Tell us uh, where we find you, how we connect with you on the web. Uh, sure. Um, you can reach me at uh, Tucker Bria Wealth Strategies. At our website is tuckerbria.com. That's T as in Tom, U-C-K-E-R, B as in boy, R as in Robert, I as in India, A as in apple.com. Uh, we're based in Durham, North Carolina, but uh, have clients uh, and take calls from all over the country, if not the world. So uh, very easy to get in touch with me. All right. And of course, if you have a question for Jim, you can always send me an email. We'll get you an answer. KL at KerryLutz.com. That's where you send it. And uh, don't forget, subscribe to our newsletter. It's free, FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Jim, been a pleasure having you on. Great new guest. We'll talk to you again soon. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Kerry. Thanks for listening to Kerry Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.